Hey there, Apana here and I'm back with another video. By the end of this video, you will know how to carry out landing lag, auto cancels and L cancels for your aerial moves. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you've been enjoying the series and don't forget to check out the Patreon where you can have access to the Discord server and specific videos to your requests as well as access to the scripts and files of these videos. So without further ado, I'll see you in the tutorial. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is go into the state machine. And where it says nair, the first thing we're going to do is implement this code. Else, parent or lag frames equals 7. The way this works is by saying that if our hitbox has not been finished and it is still being carried out, if you land on the ground, then your lag frames are going to be equal to 7. Once your attack has finished, then your lag frames are going to be equal to 0. So this is one way that you can implement landing lag. Okay, so I've gone ahead and added all these lag frames all these landing lags to all of these aerials so for fair it's 18 frames of landing lag for bear it's 9 frames etc etc if you want to know what values that i'm using what you can do is go to the smash bros ultimate website for frame data i should have an annotation where you can look at the landing lag for certain attacks and so now if you're looking for adding an auto cancel feature to the game where you can do an attack and before the attack has fully come out your landing lag is zero or after the hitbox for your attack has disappeared, your landing lag is reduced, you would want to add some code that looks something like this. This would be the code that you'd want to add. If your frame counter is less than 5 frames, then your landing lag is 0. If it is more than 15 frames, the landing lag is 0. But if it's between 5 and 15, then you have the landing lag of 7. And so for you to ensure that you have this working properly, you want to go back to your Fox script and look at your Nair and look at what frame does your nair end at for me it is 37 as you can see and so i am able to have a range of 5 to 15 but if let's say i was to do something like 5 to 45 this wouldn't really work because it would always be the frame here would always be more than that of 36 so you want to make sure that the duration of your hitbox attack matches up with the duration of your auto cancel and so now moving on from the Nair attacks where we've added in some lag frames and some auto cancels we're now going to add in some L cancelling. Now L cancelling is actually not too hard to implement but we are going to have to implement a buffer mechanic which would require us to go back into the Fox script. Okay and so what I'm going to do is under the Fox script I'm going to go under let's say attributes and I'm going to add in a new category of variables. So under this new category of variables we're going to call it buffers and it's going to incorporate these two new variables which is var l underscore cancel and var cooldown which are both going to be equal to zero. Now as these two variables are equal to zero what we're going to do is we're going to do control f and go to where update frames is. This function over here that updates the frame by one by incrementing the frames by one each frame. What we're going to do is under this we're going to add in some new code and it's going to look something like this. Okay so over here as you can see L underscore cancel is equal to minus equals floor delta times 60. This is the equivalent of getting the L cancel to reduce by one each frame but this is a more accurate calculator to get the number of one. You will understand in the next video why I'm doing it this way but for the time being, just do floor delta times 60. And so then what I'm doing is I'm clamping L cancel so that L cancel cannot be lower than zero. And you're going to see how all of this matches up together. Likewise, it's the same thing for cooldown. Cooldown should probably be floor delta minus 60 as well, like that. And it's the same thing. Cooldown cannot be less than zero, but cooldown will be whatever value it is. So the highest value that cooldown and L cancel can be is whatever L cancel and cooldown ends up being but it cannot be lower than zero and then from here we're going to go back into the state machine script and so here in the state machine script this is where all the magic begins what we're going to do is we're going to scroll all the way to the top of the get transitions function and underneath all these attack variables and statements we're going to add in a new statement and it's going to look something like this all right so what this statement is saying is it's saying that if you press the shield button and aerial is not true and the cooldown is equal to zero then parent.l cancel is going to be equal to 11 and parent.cooldown is going to be equal to 40. now what does actually what does this actually mean 
Now, before I actually dive into what this statement means, there's something that I need to fix because I made a mistake. This is not meant to say Ariel is not true. This is meant to say if Ariel is true. And when I scroll all the way down to what this Ariel actually means, this Ariel function states whether or not any of these states are the current state. So for example, if states include states or air, states or there, near, fair, up air or fair, and the ground ray casts are not colliding, then it will return true. If the ground ray casts are colliding, then it will return false. So that's what this aerial function means. So now you can continue with the tutorial. This is basically saying that when cooldown is equal to zero, so remember, over here, cooldown is always going to be decreasing by one each frame. When cooldown is equal to zero, and remember the lowest value that cooldown is going to have is zero, so if it is equal to zero and you do press the shield button, then L cancel is going to be equal to 11. Now, when L cancel is equal to 11, it's going to be very soon before it starts to equal zero again because it's going to be minus by one each frame. So what this is saying is that if you do an attack and then you L cancel 11 frames prior to landing, within that 11 frames if you do land, your landing lag will be halved by two or be decreased by a half. And then what we do is we have the parent.cooldown equal 40, which means you can only try to L cancel every 40 frames. And so what we're going to do is we're going to implement the halving of the landing lag in the landing state. But for now, this is actually how you get the input for the, for the L cancel to be carried out. Okay, so now what we're going to do is scroll all the way down to the landing state. And where it says if parent.frame is equal to one pass, what, we'll do, what we're going to do is get rid of that. And in the landing state, we're going to implement this new line of code. Okay, so from line 312 to 314, these are the lines of code that you want to implement. If parent.frame is equal to 1, we then check to see if parent.l cancel is more than or equal to 0. If so, then parent.lag frame is going to be equal to the floor of parent.lag frame divided by 2. Now, what does this mean? This is basically saying that if you have a move such as now, and you land with let's say 7 frames of lag. If you've L cancelled as by determining whether or not L cancel is more than 0, we are now going to half that lag frame. So instead of it being 7, it's going to be 3.5. Now the reason why we use the floor command is because our frame counter cannot go up in half numbers. Our frame counter is whether you're at 10 frames or 15 frames, there's no 10.5 nor 15.2. And so we're using this floor command to make that 3.5 turn into 3. We want to make sure that the landing lag is as low as possible when out cancelling and so that's why we are using this floor command. Furthermore actually, we might want to change this, instead of it saying if parent or L cancel is more than or equal to zero, we might just want to change this to say that if parent or L cancel is more than zero. And so with that being the case, I can now move on to the demonstration. Okay, so now for demonstration purposes, what I'm going to do is go back to the original statement here and add in this line of code, print L cancel is true. All this is going to let me know is that if I do do a successful L cancel during an attack, then my extra lag frames that I get from let's say doing an up air or forward air will be halved when I do land. So what we can do is go to this test stage, make sure that in your project settings and you go to the input map, that shield has an input, for me it's shift. And so what I'm gonna do is start the game. And I'm not gonna maximize it fully. I just wanna make it large enough so that you can still see the output here at the bottom of the screen. And so if I do an attack and I L cancel, you can see that L cancel is true, as you can see in the bottom there. Now for me to make it clearer, I can do something like forward air. So you can see forward here, here has a lot of landing lag. I stop a lot whilst I'm doing it. But if I do forward air and then L cancel, like so, you can see the landing lag is much, is, is way lower. So forward air without L cancel, a lot of landing lag, and then forward air with the L cancel is a lot less than in like. And so that concludes it for this video. This video is brought to you by a Patreon subscriber, so don't forget to check out the Patreon and subscribe. In the next video, I'm finally going to be going through adding hit freeze so that when you hit your opponents, there will be a pause and a slowdown. So without further ado, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.